what if we had to log x but not y? What if only after taking the log of x do we have this scenario where the data looks like it's appropriate for a simple linear regression? If you're comfortable interpreting x on the log scale, you can just stop. And that is fine. You can say when the log of x increases by 1, the mean of y increases by beta 1. If you're comfortable talking about the log of x, log dollars, log, log time, log distance, that is fine. But again, I'm usually not comfortable, and I would rather talk about what happens when x itself changes and how that relates to y. So what is the equation for this particular model? We're saying the mean of y given the log of x is equal to some intercept plus some slope times the log of x. That's what we're beginning with. And already, we've got a challenge. What we talked about before is what happened to y, or the mean or median of y, when x was increased by 1, when we added 1 to x. But that's going to be a problem here. If I put an x plus 1 in there, if I end up with a log 4 and a log 3 and try to subtract them, I'm not going to be able to get rid of the log. I'm not going to be able to get rid of the log. That 1 is going to be stuck in the log. So I'm going to do something else. Instead of talking about what happens when x increases by 1, I'm going to talk about what happens when x is multiplied by some particular value, when x is multiplied by some particular value. So as we did before, let's write down this equation for a particular scenario. What if I have the mean of y given that when I say log of x, I'm referring to the log of 3, in other words, x is equal to 3. Okay. Then I've got beta 0 plus beta 1 times log of 3. Fine. But instead of writing the other line to say log of 4, I'm going to say I'm interested in the scenario where we have the mean of y given the log of x is equal to the log of 3 times k. And k is just some number. It could be any number. This is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 log of 3 times k. Now note that I could have done something a little bit more parallel to this in the scenario where I had not logged x. Instead of writing 3 and comparing it to 4, I could have written 3 and then 3 plus k. Instead, I assume that we just say 3 plus 1 and get to 4 because we'd get the same thing regardless of what we added. It would generalize in a simple way in that case. And it generalizes in a simple way in this case as well, but I find this one easier to understand if instead of just saying, let's imagine what happens when we multiply 3 by 2, we'll immediately talk about the general case uh, for 3 by k so that you don't have to derive that one yourself. So now I'm going to go through the same scenario I went through before. I'm going to subtract the left sides and subtract the right sides. I've got the mean of y given log of 3k minus the mean of y given the log of 3 is equal to beta 0 minus beta 0 cancels. Beta 1 log 3k minus beta 1 log 3. So let me factor out the beta 1. Here is the log of 3k minus the log of 3. How is this going to simplify? What are we going to do there? We're going to remember again back to the log rules. The log of a times b, the log of 3 times k, is equal to the log of a plus the log of b, the log of 3 plus the log of k. So I'm going to continue this down here, just taking advantage of those log rules. The log of 3k is equal to the log of k plus the log of 3. And then I've got this minus log 3 down here. So what happens? 3's cancel. The statement we have here is that the difference in mean, means of y is equal to beta 1 times the log of k. Let me write that again over there, and all I'm going to do is add this quantity to both sides to make it even more clear. So what I've got is that the mean of y given that x is equal to, say, 3 times k 
which is the same as saying the log of x is equal to the log of 3 times k, is equal to the mean of y given that x is just equal to 3, which is the same as saying the log of x is equal to the log of 3, plus beta 1 log k. So what's the statement we've ended up with here? When x is multiplied by k, the mean of y increases by beta 1 log k. And for any particular scenario, that's actually a fairly simple statement. Because k is just some number that we can choose. For example, let's choose 2. Let's talk about what happens to the mean of y when x doubles. And remember that we have an estimate of this value beta 1. This is an estimate of the slope for y and log of x. And so we have some number. We have some number here. So this will be something like maybe 5 is our slope. 5 times the log of 2 is just some number. right? That's just some number that we can calculate. Whatever that number is, that's the amount that the mean of y increases by when x is multiplied by 2. If we're interested in what happens when x is multiplied by 3, we have our estimate of the slope, and we'll take that number times log of 3. That's the amount that the mean of y goes up by when x is multiplied by 3. And just as we did in the previous context, we can note that we have an interval for the slope. We have a lower bound and an upper bound for beta 1. If I take the lower bound and multiply by log of 2 or log of 3, whatever value of k I'm interested in, and I take my upper bound and I multiply by log of 2, log of 3, whatever I'm interested in, I'll get lower and upper bounds for this quantity, which is the amount by which the mean of y given x changes when x is multiplied by 2 or 3 or whatever I chose.